Well, hello folks. I just want to make this video today to try and help uncover the real truth behind false religion and what it really represents and what many people who are quite naive to the symbolism that and what it shows and what they really need to know about the false religion perhaps that they are part of. And I just want to preface this video by saying that this is in no way meant to imply any personal intentions upon individuals who are caught up within false religious systems. The idea of showing you all this symbolism today is that so that you can make more of an informed decision based on the word of God and your convictions. That there are really only two religions in this world. There's Luciferianism and then there's biblical Christianity and I'll show you why. I went to London yesterday and this is an image I took in a Anglican church. Now this is a high Anglican church. It's closest to Catholicism. So you'll see how similar this looks to Catholic imagery. And that's the altar at the front of the church. And this is the pulpit where people preach from. And you'll see there straight away that we have the IHS in a pyramid with the sun rays around it. And we've shown this before, how the higher ups in false religion pass this off simply as IHS meaning Jesus and the pyramid triangle representing the Trinity. That's what they claim it is. And I'm sure that many priests, many vicars probably think that that is the case. Many parishioners probably believe that is the case. So it's not to lay blame on those who are innocent of that and you've also got the pyramid side, of course, that ties into the ancient Egyptian sun worship, that same kingdom that came from Babylon through Egypt and Greece to Rome today. So it's no surprise this is similar to Roman symbolism in this church because it's a high Anglican church and Henry VIII wanted to change the church to get divorced, but many of the Romanism attributes still remained. So you'll see this is very Romanesque as we go along. Now you see that sun rays, this is a Freemasonic temple. Um, you'll see the sun rays on the roof there. Very similar sunburst, very similar style of sunburst in a Masonic lodge, that's a Masonic lodge. And that's in the High Anglican Church. Very similar style of sunburst. And I thank you Chris for sending this image in. Um, so you'll see that the secret societies, as we go along, and this false religion, the religion of Babylon, that this is very, it all ties in together. It's very similar. You'll see. Um, you'll see there the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits, they use that sunburst. Black sun logo with IHS, again with the cross in the sun. In this sign, usual conquer, IHSV with the nails underneath. Uh, and it's the kingdom of the sun. It's the religion of the S-U-N. And you'll see there in this Masonic emblem, you've got the two pillars either side. You've got the sun in the centre with that very similar sunburst again, that same style. And on the altar, that's the altar in the middle, uh, with the beehive on the left, which to do, is to do with the system of power. So very Roman it all ties into that Rome thing. And you'll see as we go along that Rome is that extension of that Babylonian beginnings, that false religion and system, uh, but also that really this is tying into a new Babylon, the resurrection of Babylon, so to speak, the Babylon reworking, that this final kingdom comes upon the earth. And this is the Knights Templar. Uh, they have the sunburst, very similar sunburst to the Jesuits, as, as we've shown before, this is the temple in London that was built by the Knights Templar. And this is the emblem for the inner or middle temple, I think it was, with the Pegasus horse and the sunburst. So it's all about the kingdom of the S-U-N. And there's another emblem uh, to do with the Knights Templar with the lamb carrying the cross. And that's a symbol they used and it has the sunburst behind it. So you'll see, again, the connection to the sun. And that's it right there, the pyramid and the sunburst. And so here, here we go. This is really getting to the heart of the false religion. This is a group of Freemasons 
visiting the Masonic Lodge near Roslyn Chapel in Scotland. And that pillar here in the centre, that pillar is in Roslyn Chapel. But you'll see at the top of the pillar, again, the sun. Now this is where it ties back to Babel, to Babylon, the Tower of Babel. You see that pillar has the lines swirling around it going up to the top, which is the sun. So this is very similar. The ziggurats in Mesopotamia, when you look back into the history, the ziggurats were built as stairways to heaven, often in that pattern of circling round. The Tower of Babel was believed to be a ziggurat, but there are also other ziggurats in Mesopotamia. We have staircases from earth to heaven, the house of the link between heaven and earth at Lhasa, the house of the seven guilds of heaven and earth at Borsippa, the house of the foundation platform of heaven and earth at Babylon. This stuff is covered in the Old Testament that basically Babel can be translated as a gateway, Bab means gate, to the gods, El. El means gods, Bab El. So a gateway to the gods. And this is Freemasonic here, but this is the essence of all false religion. This is what it's all about. It's about self-elevation. And that comes back to Nimrod in Babylon, trying to elevate himself to a gateway to the gods, to have this shrine on top of a tower that reaches the heavens. And that ziggurat, those ziggurats, which were staircases, a stairway from earth to heaven. That is what links all of these false religions together. Roman Catholic and Hinduism and all the other, Buddhism, all these other religions, they always are based on earning your salvation, elevating yourself, gaining knowledge through Gnosticism that you will become higher and ascend to a higher plane, or good works to earn your salvation, working your way towards God. And that's what this is. These ziggurats were to do with self-elevation, climbing up, to the heavens to make yourself as God like Nimrod was that first archetype of the Antichrist there in um, Babel. And that's what it is there, you see. So it's again the sun, it's the kingdom of the S-U-N, it's the worship of the sun, Helios, Apollo. But you'll see that it's set out like a temple. You'll see the triangular roof at the top and you'll see the four pillars. You'll see an image in the centre which is the crowning of the Madonna, the crowning of the mother goddess with her son child, you know, Semiramis, Nimrod, Tammuz, or um, Diana, Horus brought forth. You'll see that in the center there, in the center of this temple front, the temple facade. And you'll see that's the altar at the bottom where they do the mass, where they probably believe in transubstantiation that it's not symbolic to them, it's a literal flesh and blood of, of, of the Christ, um, which obviously is, is wrong, it's error, because it's symbolic, it's not literal. Um, so th that's the belief they have in Romanism and in High Anglicanism. You come into this church believing that they are worshipping the real Jesus. Their intentions may differ, and that might be why they're caught up in deception in some ways, and I'm sure there are some who truly believe. But you come in here and it's, it's a trick in the sense that this is a temple facade and a lot of people don't even realise that. And at the top of the temple, you'll see the sun. So this is a Hellenised temple. It's a sun worship temple. Why else would there be a sun at the top? You know, it's sad that there's so little discernment in these things, but there is a sun at the top. And all through the Bible, we know that sun worship and paganism is not to be mixed with Christianity. It's not Christianity. It's the other kingdom. It always has been. And of course, the Romans were involved in a lot of sun worship. And that's the same thing. You see there the pillars. And in the center, you have the sun, very similar theme with the altar in the center. And here's a, an example of a pagan temple 
in Rome, in ancient Rome, and that is ex exactly the same, exactly the same. So you can see that this has four pillars there with the triangular roof, and that's the front of a Roman temple. That's a, that was a pagan temple in Rome, dedicated to pagan gods. Why would you want to go to a church that has something that even references that, let alone has it at the, the front, the main piece of the church building, the main front, the, the altar, where you're all looking towards, where it's centre of attention, is the same as an ancient Roman temple associated with paganism. Now, as far as I understand from my limited research on this, the Christians did take over these pagan temples and make them Christian. So you could say, well, maybe that's that's the reference, you know, that Christianity has destroyed the pagan side and now reclaimed it for themselves. But the interesting thing is, you look at the Palace of Helios. This is called the Palace of Helios. And you'll see that this is, it answers the question really, doesn't it? You've got the four pillars on the front, you've got this man stand, sitting as God on the throne with a light rays coming from his eyes. This is the palace of the sun god, Helios. And then you look, the triangular roof, and there's the sun. There's the sun. The sun symbolism, Helios in the sun, right there. And that is exactly the same position as that. A palace of Helios. There it is, right there. So you can see that this is to do with sun worship, and so then you really do see the truth. It is related to Helios, the god of the sun. This is what it, it links back to. Through that false religion, through that counterfeit form of Christianity, which is not Christ biblical Christianity at all because it's counterfeit, is not what the Bible promotes, is not what the Bible ordains. You can see that all of these places that are, are doing this, there's another IHS Catholic uh, style, Jesuit style sunburst on the front, uh, on the facade of this church, I believe in Belgium. And you've got that pyramid at the top there, just above it, that same triangular shape, and you've got the sun. You've, you've got the same thing. You've got this hearkening back to a temple of the sun, of sun worship, which links to Apollo, the false god, the false system of church and state, a false church and state throughout the ages, the beast kingdom that will come in the last days, that comes out of this false system, the ten toes in the statue of Daniel, the feet with the Roman Empire that is still around across this earth, the church and state of the Roman Empire, the false religion, the whore of Babylon and all of that gives way to this new beast kingdom that comes upon the earth, which the Antichrist will come from, the man of sin rather, the son of perdition will rise up and rule as if he is God, as if he is God himself. So above all other religions, all, the, all other religions, he will raise himself above as God himself. So you can see, hopefully a bit clearer now, this, what you're really looking at. What you're really looking at, that front of that Roman pagan temple with the sun in the centre, the temple of Helios. And the goddess in the centre, who is, I'll show you in a second, is being crowned, the goddess with the sun, the sun god. So it is that Babylonian religion, the whore of Babylon there, being crowned. It's not really Mary, it's the divine feminine. It's the woman riding the beast. You know, the whore, the, the prostitute to which many commit fornication with. And fornication in the Bible, spiritually, is if you, you, you basically flirt and commit fornication with false doctrine, with false religion. The, the false religion of Rome and the false religion of Babylon, which is what it comes down to. So she is being crowned the mother goddess. And remember that mother goddess was worshipped all through the centuries and in the New Testament, they, the apostles stood against it and some of the 
conflict that they came up against were people who were adherents to this mother goddess worship. And remember, it says, Diana of the Ephesians, of whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. It says that in the New Testament, that the world worshipeth this false religion, the world. Not just Asia, the world. You see this across the world. And the, the unfaithful woman, the prostitute, in Proverbs, you'll see that the prostitute is is related to the apostate church, the false religion, Jezebel, all of that. So that's what this is about. And something I found interesting is the temple, this temple of Horus, the sun god, in Egypt, how similar that is. So you have the four pillars on the front of this one in the Anglican church with the sun in the top center. And here, look, you have four grooves. And then at the top, you have the sun right in the center. Horus, the temple of Horus. Four grooves in the same places as the pillars and then the sun in the centre. That's in ancient Egypt. I'm not an expert on this, but I just find that quite striking, that it's the same layout. So Isis, Horus, Set of Egypt, the pagan trinity, false trinity, the inversion. Why does Egypt have similar things? Why does Babylon, Egypt, the Greek Empire, and Rome have all very similar things? Because it's the same empire that gives way to the man of sin. And it's the Babylon reworking. And there you have the same type of temple. This is Freemasonic. Temple in the centre of two pillars, the front of the temple and the pagan religion, Luciferianism. And, the you know, this is against the Bible. And this is very clear. There's some like zeitgeist that fake a link between saying that Jesus Christ himself, the true Jesus Christ, is somehow a rehash of the sun god. They make up stuff to try and link it together for a start, stuff that's been proven to be lies. But also that what they're trying to do is they're trying to say that Jesus is nothing more than the creation. When in fact creation, as we learn in the Bible, creation testifies to the creator. So that any similarities between the signs you see in the heavens that are true signs, that is creation testifying to the handiwork of its creator, which Jesus Christ, all things were created by him and for him. So the, and he holds all things together. So he is not the sun god. Jesus is not this false religion. This false religion is the inversion, is the anti-Christ. And you can tell that here for a start in the book of Ezekiel, uh, where we're told that there was sun worship in the temple. Then he brought me to the inner court of the Lord's temple. There at the entrance to the Lord's temple between the porch and the altar were 25 men with their backs towards the Lord's temple and facing the east, prostrating themselves to the sun. They were worshipping the sun in, this, in the temple. They were defiling the temple. They were compromising. They were changing the true God for the false God, which was represented by the sun. And facing the east, the sun rises in the east. And you'll see that a lot, biblically, the, the false religion is often associated with the east, eastern philosophy, eastern religion. It's all the same kind of thing. So that shows you there that, that they're condemned in, in Ezekiel, for worshipping the sun in the temple. So there you have the sun worship in the temple. This is it, the two kingdoms. You've got the kingdom of Babylon and you've got the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. Uh, and this is a battle, it's a spiritual battle. It's been a battle throughout the centuries, throughout the ages, throughout the millennia. This is the battle on this earth, the real heart of the battle, false religion, of Babylon, the beast that will rise, and the true kingdom of Jesus Christ, he comes back and destroys it with that one stone in the, the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. Jesus comes back and his return, he destroys the whole thing and the last remnants of it, of the beast, the beast kingdom in the last, um, the last days. Uh, and this is the image that's in 
the centre of that front of the temple, above the altar, you've got the uh, crowning of the mother, go- mother goddess, the divine feminine, the whore of Babylon, essentially, and her child, like Isis, Osiris, Semiramis, Nimrod. She is the queen of heaven there, you know. She's being crowned. The, the crown is almost emanating from the sun rays. She's like the queen of heaven, the false goddess figure. Depending on your eschatology, some people believe, and I, I'm one of them, that the third temple will be built, rebuilt on the Temple Mount. That's just my own opinion. But uh, the temple being rebuilt and the Antichrist taking his seat in there or the, the abomination of desolation, the image of the beast or whatever, however that plays out, and I'm not entirely sure, isn't it interesting that you are sitting in front of this, this image of a temple and then we've got the whole idea of the temple being rebuilt and the false Christ taking his seat there or the image of the beast or whatever, however that plays out and, and whatever is accurate to the Bible, which is still, we still don't fully see clearly necessarily yet. But it's just interesting to me that this, the false religion has a lot of symbolism of the Holy of Holies, and I've seen that in other Catholic churches before, years back when I was first making videos, I was like, this really does look like it's the Holy of Ho- a replica of the Holy of Holies or the Ark of the Covenant or something to this, the altars in these places. And it really just does make you wonder when you've got those prophecies that many believe that the Antichrist will take, or the man of sin, should I say, will take his seat in the temple um, And that we've got all these movements to rebuild the temple. And when you go to the Temple Institute in Jerusalem, for example, you can see that their philosophy is Eastern. And I don't know if you remember, but the golden lamp of Queen Helena, which is to do with reflecting the sun. And that's what the Jewish temple activists told me in Jerusalem, that that this, this whole kind of Kabbalistic sun worship stuff ties into that third temple when you've got the golden lamp of Queen Helena which hangs in the porch of Solomon's temple on the front of the third temple uh, and that's what they picture even the Temple Institute picture that and it's it's like a, a ball that reflects the sun so again you've got the sun worship in this Hellenized compromised temple and it's very similar it's hanging down on the porch of the temple and it reflects the sun. So you, the lamp of Queen Helena. So you've got all of those aspects. And, and if you go to the Temple Institute in Jerusalem, you will learn that their philosophy, as I said, is very Eastern. It's very self-elevation, very self-empowerment, rising to the next stage in human evolution. But you've got that idea that um, it's more than a building. That's what they say. It's more than a building. It's not just about a building on the Temple Mount. It's about representing the elevation of humanity. And you can see how this Antichrist figure is going to be the embodiment of that philosophy. He will claim to be God himself, the man of sin, the son of perdition. He will claim to be God himself on this earth. And so you've got that religion, and that's that's the difference. That is the difference between true religion and false religion. This is the false religion, self-empowerment, self-elevation, the lie from the serpent in the Garden of Eden, the lie that the snake came and told Eve that you can become like God, knowing good and evil. And that is exactly the same lie that's gone all through history. The Bible is the truth, folks. The Bible is the truth. And our God in heaven is awesome, powerful. He is above all things. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, He is sovereign over everything and even though we fell into sin and followed the lie of the serpent of the devil and we're all lost and headed for hell because justly we we are sinful and god is not and he can't allow sin into his presence but he sent his son jesus christ into the world to be sacrificed for our sins to be the ransom shed his blood for our sins who lived a perfect life on our behalf And that he then could, through that divine exchange, could count us through Jesus' finished work, through his perfection. 
And that's the only way to be saved. God is loving. But unfortunately, there is this rebellious attitude in the heart of man and through the devil's lies that we can elevate ourselves to become like God and build a gateway, a stairway to heaven ourselves. That we don't need to be humble. We don't need to be repentant. We don't need any of those things. We can, in our pride and ego, do it ourselves. And that is what all of this comes down to. It's very simple. It's either the religion of self or the religion of Jesus Christ. There is only two options. The first one in Babylon, joined to this world, leads to hell, hell forever, justly because we deserve it. On the other side, if you accept the gospel, if you call upon the Lord Jesus Christ, ask him to be your Lord and Saviour, that he might forgive you for, for your sins, that you repent and believe on his finished work, his death and resurrection. Then his righteousness will be added to your account and you'll be going to heaven forever. And that is the wonderful good news. God bless you all and take care. I hope this helped.